JLCamp7 from rcgroups.com. Hey guys, today we're going to uh, talk about setting up the Aeroseam 2000 gimbal to function on manual tilt on the Phantom. This is using all the stock configurations of the Phantom, and so we're going to do that. Also, I, I'm flying with the Fataba T8J, and I'm going to do a video on that as well, on how to set that up. But for this, this is stock configuration and uh, how to get manual on the 7th channel. Um, so anyway, as you can see, the Aeroseum 2000 gimbal has already been installed. I have a video that I did showing how to do that. And uh, this is going to be getting into the manual tilt. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so we've got it flipped over here. What we need to do is we need to remove these three hex screws from each arm. Okay, uh, remove those first. Then when you've got those removed, then we're going to remove these screws. There's one screw at the very tip of each arm. So remove the hex screws, then those. Um, what I will say is just be very careful as you're removing them. I'd say do two or three of these on each arm at a time, then flip it over to pull them out or if you've got a little uh, magnetized thing because you don't want these falling on the floor and have to go searching for them. But go ahead and remove everything and uh, once you've done that, then we're going to flip it over. So if you need to pause this while you do that, do that and we'll come back once that's done. All right, once you get all the screws removed, then what we're gonna do is we're going to flip the Phantom over. And now we're going to take off the props, which hopefully uh, you've at least put them on, so I'm sure you know how to take them off. Once your props are off, what we're gonna do is take off this shell. Now, if you haven't done it before, if you haven't taken off the top shell, be very careful as you're doing it. Don't just pull it straight up. You wanna pull it up, but kind of off to the side too. Uh, because your GPS is located here on the top and it has wiring connected to the NASA. So, uh, so be careful as you're pulling it because you don't want to put too much pressure. Here you can see the wire going up to the GPS and going right here into the NASA control unit. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pull that out okay, of the NASA control unit. And then that way you've got a lot more area to work with. Also, too, you've got your compass as well that is still connected down here. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and detach that from the bottom and pull that back through as well. So go ahead and do that. All right, so now we've got the top half of the shell off, and um, let's get started in installing the wiring, okay? Uh, what I did is you can see I've still got my Fataba receiver there. Um, I didn't want to take it completely out so what I did is I unplugged it and I unplugged the stock receiver back in so that's why yours might look a little different. Um, but anyway there's a stock receiver it's plugged back into the NASA so once again this is for setting up for the stock. Uh, in another video I'm going to do a setup on Fataba. So here's your wire. All you're going to do is run it through. Um, you can choose whichever holes you want. So this one might be a good one if it's open on yours. On mine it's not because of the Fataba. Um, because of the Fataba uh, antenna that I've got running out there. But I'm going to run over here. Like I said, any open hole, then you pick that. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll go to the next step. So I've ran the wire now through uh, one of the holes on the Phantom, one of the outlets there. And I have it plugged now into the gimbal. Um, one thing I will note is you actually can pull the little black plastic pieces off of there. Um, and then put them back on if it makes it easier, but I won't get into all that. But um, one another thing to note is that uh, I can't guarantee what colors will come with your gimbal. It might be green, yellow, orange, but I've also seen like red, blue, black. Um, so, but it's not confusing. All you gotta do is match up with whatever's here uh, onto your NASA. So, so 
don't necessarily follow color coding unless you have exactly what I have, but you can still follow the pin alignment. So I have green in the outermost pin, I have yellow in the center, and then orange in the innermost pin. So all you gotta do is follow that. If you've got different color, just uh, follow this, and I'll continue to try and uh, put those two together so that you can follow that real long. So now let's plug the other pins into the NASA, okay? All right, so once again, we've got green on the outside, yellow in the middle, orange on the inside, and those marking on the board would be A2 is green, A1 is yellow, and orange is your ground. So now let's get into what we need to, where we need to plug everything here. Um, first off, your green, which is your pitch control, is going to go into F2, the bottom pin of F2. Um, next will be your yellow, that's going to go into the bottom of F1. That's to control your roll. Uh, I don't think we can control roll with the stock phantom controller only pitch. Um, so you could also just leave it unplugged. That's up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and just plug it in just to have it there uh, in case something does happen where we can do that. And then lastly, your orange is your ground. Then I would plug that into your F2 top pin. Okay. Um, plug that once again into the top pin of F2. So green outermost uh, on the board, outermost pin on the board, A2, it's going to go into F2 bottom. Yellow, your center, center one on the board is going to go into F1 bottom, or you can leave it unplugged. And then orange, your ground, is going to go to F2 top. So once you get those plugged in, then the next step is we're going to go into the uh, software and make the adjustments that we need to make to get the manual working. So here we go. All right, so here we are guys, now we're at the computer. We've got the Phantom over here. I've got the USB plugged in. Uh, I don't have the battery plugged in yet. Um, I went ahead and put the shell back on just so I could plug in the GPS and compass just so everything would read correctly in the NATSA um, software here, so in the Assistant. Um, now that you've got this, what you're gonna do next, you're gonna plug in your battery. Uh, so you can make some adjustments on here in the NATSA. But one thing I do want to suggest um, now with me doing this, uh, I would suggest going ahead and unplugging those three pins that you first plugged into your gimbal um, down here when you're doing this. The only reason being is because now they're plugged in without first turning the gimbal on uh, in the assistant, then your gimbal is going to start doing crazy oscillations and things when uh, it first comes on. So go ahead and maybe unplug those three wires just while you're turning this on and then just plug them right back in. Super simple. Alright, now as you can see mine rolled downward. I don't know if you can see that from this angle. But uh, that's because I have the assistant on. But like I said, what you want to do is maybe go ahead and plug those wires just while you're turning this on so that you don't get your camera doing all kinds of crazy stuff uh, when you first plug it in. So what you're going to do is go into the NAS Assistant and you're going to go to Advanced Settings and you're going to go to Gimbal right here. Okay. And then what you're going to do, it will be in the off position originally. What you're going to want to do is turn it on and you're going to hit yes to confirm. Then the next thing that's going to happen is output frequency. It's going to be set to 50. Uh, go ahead and move that up to 400. Okay. And then the very last thing is the automatic control gain. Uh, both of these I believe are set to 20 on the stock setting. So what you want to do is change both of those to 5. And you'll just have to hit enter after you enter each thing. And uh, then that'll be it. Okay. After you've done that, then you're good to go, and we're in business. Uh, let's go. I'm going to show you it in action here in a minute, and then I'm going to talk also about changing some of the parameters over on the simple BGC software to adjust uh, where the angle sits when you turn the when you turn the um, seventh channel on the stock controller. All right, so here we go. I've got it uh, here sitting kind of hanging off this ledge of the box here so that you can see it. Um, one thing I do want to recommend is when you're setting it up in the computer and you're first plugging it in and things, if you can maybe stack a few CDs or something to kind of give it 
uh, a ledge away from the table to work on uh, only because it is kind of going to possibly uh, rotate downwards when you first plug it in stuff and so you don't want to put any extra pressure on the motors than you have to so um, but now it's plugged in what I'm going to do I'm going to take this little flathead screwdriver I've got plug it into the seventh channel of the uh, or put it in the slot of the back of the stock TX and let's see this thing in action You can see full tilt and I've actually got mine running full 90 degrees and I'm having no oscillations. I know some others have um, and I seem to be having no issues with that at all. So now when I get up too far on this end then uh, I'm getting some motor gear issues. Um, however I don't plan to shoot the bottom of my Phantom. So there you go. You can see that it's fully functioning. Everything's working exactly as it should. and. Uh, Pretty cool. Um, next we're going to get into maybe playing with some of the parameters on the software that comes with the gimbal. And uh, so let's do that just so you can change a few things if you're interested in it. And then we'll go from there. Alright, now that we've got the gimbal working then uh, and setting the manual tilt, then I'm going to show you how to adjust some of the parameters um, in case you want to adjust them to your liking a little more. As you can see, I've got the gimbal plugged in, and all we're going to do is go on here and open your user interface that you uh, have gotten with your, with your gimbal. And what you want to do is go over here and choose uh, the COM3 port, okay? Uh, and then you want to go down here, and actually, never mind, it just showed it. Sometimes nothing will show up in these. If that's the case, then just come down here and hit read. Um, and sometimes also when you do that, then you also just get here and nothing here. So just hit read again. But this time everything popped right up. So essentially you don't want to mess with any of these unless you really have to. Um, these have all been hand tuned from the stock setup there at Hobby Wing. And uh, just to kind of show you how this works in case you've never used this interface before, is what you want to do is if you hit on an arrow, um, you hold it down. And once it highlights, you just drag your mouse to the left or right. And by doing that, it will change the parameter. And then once you let go, then it will lock in whatever you chose. So that's how this works. Um, the only thing you're really going to mess with if you're wanting to change the adjustments of how far it moves is these right here. And so as you can see, the roll is set at third, negative 30 and 30. We're going to leave those because obviously a roll is not functioning um, in manual mode on the stock transmitter. It's just not possible that we know of at least. Um, it has nothing to do with the gimbals issue or anything like that. It's just uh, that we don't know that there's a, another channel or how it would work for that. So the main one you're going to want to play with is the pitch and roll. and or I'm sorry, the pitch of the minimum max angle. Uh, some have said that they've had oscillations when it's been at a 90 degree which means directly straight to the ground. Um, I'm not noticing any issues on mine at 90. But if you are, then just hold that down and just bring it back. A lot of people have been moving it just even to 85 and, uh, and it have had no issues with it whatsoever. So just move that back to, you know, and keep playing with it until you get none. Like I said, I haven't had any issues. The main one that I'm going to focus in on here is the pitch. And I'm going to bring that all the way to zero. And the reason being is when I have my, uh, on the stock transmitter, when I have the knob turned all the way one way, I just want it to sit level. Um, instead of shooting up at the quad, I really have no desire, no reason for it to shoot, be shooting the bottom of the quad. So I'm going to adjust that to zero. And... Um, Anyway, and so now there it is, it's set zero. So now when you have it turned all the way one way, then it's going to be level. It's going to be a straight on shot uh, from the Phantom. Whereas if you adjusted that, keep going to the negative, then it's going to, um, it's going to start angling up towards the Phantom. So uh, if you want it maybe just always a little down, you can do five or ten or whatever. Um, but I've got set for zero right now, and like I said, my max angle. I haven't had any issues with it, um, but just to be safe, 
I'm going to move it up just to, uh, and by the way, this thing is a little, there it goes, 2 up to 85. When you're trying to use your mouse pad, it's a little whatever. Anyway, 85, because actually, really, to be honest with you, you can't see the difference between 85 and 90. Uh, but it does help for many with the, with the um, oscillation. So there you go. That's it. All you need to do is go down here now and hit right and it will write it there we go it's done writing it's done highlighting and now that is saved so now you're good to go um, that's pretty much it for this hey I just want to say thanks for tuning in I hope this video has been helpful for you and uh, I meant to do this in the beginning but I just want to give a huge shout out to Alan H over at rcgroups.com been very instrumental in getting the manual set up working and showing how to do that and so I just want to say thank you uh, to Alan I really appreciate that and also just want to remind you that I'm just a hobbyist like anyone else I definitely don't consider myself a pro so if there's anything that you saw where you think the parameters should be different or something then go for it but hopefully it's been helpful for you and uh, I went back to the stock transmitter and receiver to do this so I actually run the Fataba 8J on mine so the next video coming up is going to be uh, setting up the manual tilt on the Fataba 8J and it'll work with uh, a lot of the others as well, um, the FG and, and it, pretty much any of them it will at least give you some basic guidelines of how to get that working on your transmitter. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. I really have enjoyed making this video and we'll see you next time.